Hi! In this video, I will show you the impact of air-related humidity on the length of a discharge coming out of a Tesla coil. So obviously at home, I do not have a climate chamber, so we cannot perform these experiments very systematically, but instead we are going to do it for two scenarios. The first case is the atmosphere in my room. Using this device, currently, the relative humidity in my room is around 55%. So this is one scenario. For the second scenario, I'm going to use a steam cleaner. Gently blow steam on top of the Tesla coil and then turn on the Tesla coil. So we are going to compare the length of the discharge between these two scenarios. And based on the outcome, we will conclude what is the impact of air relative humidity on the length of the discharge. So first I will do the experiment and then I will explain the results. All right, so this is the first scenario. Relative humidity of air is around 55%. I'm going to apply 135 volts. We observe the maximum length of the discharges. We notice that the maximum length of the discharges passes above the lower level of the tape. For the second case, I'm going to blow a steam on top of the Tesla coil. So what we notice is that the length of the discharges decreased when I add steam on top of the Tesla coil. So this is something that I'm going to explain now. All right. In the experiments, I use the term relative humidity. So I thought it's a good idea to explain what relative humidity and absolute humidity are. So relative humidity describes the volume of water vapor per cubic meter of air as a percentage of its maximum moisture holding capacity at a given temperature and pressure. Absolute humidity describes the actual amount of water vapor in the air in gram per cubic meter. This also depends on temperature of the air. Here I have some examples from this reference. For example, at 25 degree with 100% relative humidity, we will have an absolute humidity of 23 gram per cubic meter. If we keep the temperature constant, 25 degree, and now reduce the relative humidity to 50%, this means we have an absolute humidity of 11.5 gram per cubic meter, basically half of the previous value. With this absolute humidity of 11.5 gram per cubic meter, if now we decrease the temperature from 25 degree to 14 degree. We will end up having 100% relative humidity at 14 degree Celsius. This is because maximum moisture holding capacity of air decreases with decrease of temperature. Here we have another statement, 100% relative humidity in cold air represent a significantly lower absolute humidity than for example, 25% relative humidity in warm air. Now, we have, for example, 11.5 gram of water per cubic meter at 14 degree. If the air at 14 degree is cooled even further, its moisture holding capacity will decrease, resulting in supersaturated air. This can be observed in water vapor condensing or when it starts to rain. So basically, now we know about relative humidity and absolute humidity. Okay, so now. What is the relation between air humidity and breakdown strength of the air? Here we have IC 652, voltage measurement by means of standard air gaps. It says that the disruptive discharge voltage of a sphere gap increases with absolute humidity at a rate of 0.2% per gram per cubic meter. 
So this means that when we have a sphere, a sphere electrode, which has a uniform electric field, by increasing the moisture content, by increasing the humidity, the breakdown strength increases slightly. So this is very small amount, even if you have 10 gram per cubic meter, this is only 2%. So the increase in breakdown strength by increasing the moisture is very small when we have uniform electric field. But it still is an increasing trend. In this paper also you can see for a sphere a sphere electrode, the breakdown strength is more or less constant, maybe slightly increasing. And also here we have toroid to plane with different size of toroid. So this is also uniform electric field. We can observe that at absolute humidity level of 0.85 gram, we have 354 and 6.4 gram, we have 351. So it's very similar. This is within the error range. And here also we can see that the breakdown strength is more or less constant. So if we have uniform electric field uh, with increase of moisture, the breakdown strength increases very small amount. It's almost constant. However, when we have non-uniform electric field, for example, rod-rod electrodes, by increasing the level of absolute humidity, the breakdown strength increases quite noticeably especially if the gap distance between the electrodes is large. So for example, for 70 centimeter gap distance, you can notice that from 11 gram per cubic meter absolute humidity compared to 16 gram per cubic meter absolute humidity, the breakdown strength has increased quite significantly. So the solid line is at 20 degree, the dashed line is at 27 degree in this paper. And also here in another paper between the sphere and plane or rod and plane, these are also non-uniform electric field, we can observe that when the relative humidity increases, the breakdown strength increases. Here also same way, the relative humidity, the absolute humidity increases, the breakdown strength increases. So the conclusion is that when we have non-uniform electric field, the breakdown of strength increases with the increase of absolute humidity. Now the question is why? In order to answer this question, first we have to understand a bit about the breakdown in gases. So in order to understand breakdown in gases, we have to talk about a, a term named ionization. We have the ionization coefficient alpha is the mean number of ionization per unit length in the field direction produced by electron collision. So let's say we have some free electrons, we have a background field. The electrons will be accelerated in the background field and gain energy from the field. If the energy that they gain is sufficiently large, when they strike an atom, it can ionize the atom. So we will be left with the positive ions and two electrons. Again, these electrons will be accelerated, they gain energy, and they can ionize other atoms. So this process will continue and we say we have an electronic avalanche. So we will have lots of electrons and lots of positive ions. If this one is very large, then basically the medium here will be full with charge carriers. And basically this medium becomes a conductive medium, which in this case we say that the, the dielectric is break down. Now there are different mechanisms for ionization. So this is ionization by electron collision, but we also have, for example, photoionization. We have ionization by interaction between metastables and atoms. We have also thermoionization. So there are different processes. Also sometimes, for example, these positive ions, they come and strike negative electrodes, release more electrons, and it contributes in the process of breakdown. But all in all, we have a process that is called ionization. At the same time, we have another process that is deionization. Again, it comes with different mechanisms. One of them is attachment. So we define attachment coefficient eta is defined as the number of attachment produced in a path of a single electron traveling a distance of unit length in the direction of the field. Basically, these electrons that are created here, if you have many of them, in the next step, they will produce even more electrons and positive ions. But some of these electrons actually will be stuck to gas atoms and create negative ions. So then they, they will not be able to accelerate and create new ions. So in this case, basically, when we have, for example, attachment, we will lose some of these 
electrons which later will not anymore contribute in ionization. There are other mechanisms that will also reduce the amount of electrons. For example, we have recombination. Some of these positive ions will again attach to the electrons. Basically, they recombine. But let's say in total, we have an ionization process and we have a deionization process. So we can say that effective ionization coefficient is subtraction between these two, two processes. So alpha minus eta. So this is the coefficient which contributes in breakdown in gases. So if we have effective ionization coefficient, if it is very high, it means with lower amount of electric field, with lower amount of voltage, we can create breakdown. If this effective ionization coefficient is small, that means we need higher voltage to create breakdown. Okay, so now why breakdown strength increases with increased level of humidity? Because in dry air, negative ion formation is largely due to oxygen. So the attachment process in which the electrons are attached to other atoms, it happens mostly because of oxygen. This is because the attachment coefficient for nitrogen is almost zero and also for carbon dioxide is very small. So the oxygen is the main player. When we have humidity in air, not only oxygen is the player, but also water vapor molecules are also a player in attachment coefficient. So if you have more humidity in air, the attachment coefficient becomes higher. This means for higher humidity, the effective ionization coefficient decreases, and hence breakdown strain increases, because the attachment coefficient increases, and so the effective ionization coefficient decreases. So higher humidity means lower effective ionization coefficient, and that means higher breakdown strength. So if we have higher breakdown strength and we have higher moisture content, that is actually the reason why we observe that the length of the streamer becomes smaller when we have more moisture in air. All right, so this is the end of the explanation. I will end the video here, but before that, I'm going to show you some picture that I took from the streamers coming out of the Tesla coil.